Yeah, so let's play Arizona one more time here. Game was really, really quick and disappointing. Oof. For torpedoing the Iowa when the president was on it? Yeah. Yeah. They, uh, yeah, William D. Porter was, was an interesting ship. Uh, basically, like having a toddler running around in your fleet, just randomly throwing stuff at things. But yes, USS Iowa's first mission was to sail across the Atlantic. They took um, uh, Franklin Donald Roosevelt to the conferences uh, with the other Allied leaders. Um, and Iowa, because it was very fast and had heavy anti-aircraft armament, um, was chosen as the ship. It had just entered service. And Iowa sailed across the Atlantic, dropped off um, uh, the president, President um, FDR, in northern Africa. And uh, he was then transported by sort of train and other methods uh, east. And then he returned to the United States the same way. So back across North Africa and then um, was... Uh, transported by USS Iowa back across the Atlantic. Speaking of Lexington, where was she during the raid? Um, Lexington was near-ish Pearl Harbor. Um, not, not present at Pearl Harbor. None of the carriers were present at Pearl Harbor, but Lexington was in the Pacific. And Lexington actually had several, like kind of un, a little bit uncovered, but Lexington went and actually raided Japanese forces a few times uh, in between then and the Coral Sea Battle. Including like a uh, attempted raid at uh, Rabaul, the um, Solomon Islands fortress that the um, Japanese set up quickly. How did they let that crew man a ship? You talk about William D. Porter. I mean, like if you think about how old uh, most of the people are that serve. I mean, I think a lot of people who served in the military I tell you, I mean, it, it's young people. I mean, you're. I mean, by the time that you're a captain of like a small ship you're still quite young um and so you know maybe just kind of got excited panicky made bad decisions it happens you know and then you're talking about like a 19 year old you know sailor and you made you know made a mistake with testing torpedoes or whatever and suddenly one of them gets launched by accident i mean think about how often people like 18 19 20 year olds screw up with their jobs <laughs> it's just part of the Let's see here. It's part of the way of things. All right, I really want to help my destroyers out if I can here. So let's see if we can hit this tugboat. That's 12 guns. Hopefully one of them lands. Yeah, ooh, four hits. 4,000 damage on that tugboat. That is a good salvo. Oh, Podvoisky, please dodge all these torpedoes. Please live. Please live. Please live. Wow, he found this. Look at this gap in these torpedoes here. All right, so we hurt the T-22. Oh, boy. There's still a um, Hatsuhara. Those are Hatsuhara torpedoes here. These are the T-22 torpedoes. What's the other destroyers in this camp? Oh, there aren't any other destroyers. So both destroyers are on my side. Awesome. Feels like it's been this way all day. But at least we can maybe help out this time. Now, these guys are angling away. West Virginia is not really angling away too much, though. We should be able to damage him there. Halsey took all the carriers and exercises. Yeah. If the Japanese didn't start the carrier chain, we would witness right now real battleships. Uh, I mean, I think it was coming, it was going that way no matter what. I mean, the Japanese were the first to use it, but I mean, the Royal Navy um, was very successful using carriers in the first part of the Atlantic campaign. And I mean, the US was very committed to carrier tactics by that point in time. Obviously the successes of the of the Kirubutai, like, you know, accelerated it, but it was that, with that, I mean, that trend was very, was, was definitely happening already. <laughs> Sanders is saying, lady, again, yeah, you're never late to a live stream. You just showed up right on time for yourself. Hello, everybody. Yeah, um, and if you guys just joined the stream, a couple of people just joined the stream. If you just joined, again, like, um, if you can like the video, that would be super helpful. But um, Tidehunter was saying, yeah, I mean, the, the, the U.S. was very much, I mean, if you look at the size of the fleet carriers that the U.S. had, both Lexington and Saratoga had 
more than 75 planes. They were huge ships. Uh, as a matter of fact, the, it's pretty well documented that the British, who were the early leaders in, in carrier aviation, were quite surprised at how effective the U.S. was at um, getting large numbers of planes onto the ships, onto their carriers. Um, so Lexington, Saratoga, you had Yorktown, you had Wasp. I mean, the, the U.S. was pretty committed to large-scale fleet carriers. And most of the designs for carrier aviation that the U.S. used during the war were either already built um, or were in progress. Uh, so, was, like, Dauntless, obviously, was already constructed. The Wildcat and then, um, which would become the Hellcat design as well, which is basically just an advanced Wildcat. The Royal Navy did not put planes on the flight deck yet. The U.S. was very good at using pla uh, at stacking planes on the flight deck. You can see pictures of like Saratoga or uh, or Yorktown, even with the non-folding wing biplanes. Once they got folding wing planes, they really made. But they would jenga them in there like there was like a Tetris pieces or something. Okay. I'm just slow playing here. I don't have any reason to be too aggressive. We have the lead. I don't want to get torpedoed. I know that there's two destroyers over here. Just kind of being smart. I kind of would like to be able to shoot this Budioni if he makes a mistake. Okay, he's going backwards. And there's some those are the Hatsuhara torpedoes. Nice. Enemy heavily damaged. So that's just what I'm trying to do here. Just, just trying to be patient. I don't want to give up too central a position, but I also know that I have no protection on this flank from the two destroyers. So I kind of have to keep moving a little bit. I don't want to push into this big pile of ships here, though. I'd much prefer to deal with these couple of cruisers in the middle. The Zumwalts are nearly the size of Arizona. Yes, everything got a lot bigger. Uh, over, I mean, the size of modern, quote-unquote, destroyers is huge, and let alone like something that's called a frigate, um, comparatively. But the crew allotment is also a lot smaller, though, right? Like, things have changed. It's just... And obviously, the size of fleet carriers has just continued to increase. U.S. modern fleet carriers are just utterly enormous. The oxygen torpedo, yes. The Japanese used um, the Type 93 um, oxygen torpedoes. By the way, um, Dana, can you link? I did a video, uh, like a, a decently long video, actually, on the um, the Type 93 torpedoes. Um, but yeah, they were um, the Japanese used them heavily, all, only on surface ships. Um, but they were very, very successful early in the war. Later in the war, as sort of ranges increased, and American and British use of uh, radar improved. Yeah. See, these are these. What I'm what, basically what I'm doing is what. Remember how I couldn't catch any of the battleships that last game? <laughs> Even the slow ones, if they kept angled away from me and kept moving? It's the same problem here. This Hatsuhara is really not going to be able to be effective for me as long as I'm kind of moving away from him. Now, I do need to make that work by punishing other ships, like this Alba, for example, maybe? Or this Omaha? Oh, my guns are here, so I'm going to shoot the Omaha. I need to shoot the Alba next. And the Alba, I'm sure, is torpedoed. Okay. So the Omaha is out. Cruiser sunk. Let's try to throw off the Alba's torpedoes. So Alba has rear-mounted torpedoes. I guarantee you he's launched them. Cheers, random Canadian. Enjoy your lunch. What would happen if you hit a battleship from World War II with a modern torpedo? Um, I actually don't know. Uh, modern torpedoes work differently than uh, torpedoes of that era did, right? Uh, modern torpedoes are designed to, with magnetic detonators, to, to explode, and we killed the Alba as well. Enemy cruiser destroyed. Um, to explode under the keel and break the keel. Um, they have smaller warheads, but they're far more effective um, explosives in the warheads. I, I would, my imagine is that. Um, if it was an anti-ship torpedo, like an, a proper anti-ship torpedo and not um, like an ASW anti-submarine torpedo, then you would probably kill most um, most World War II battleships with a single torpedo. Depending on where, it, depending on where it detonated, of course. If it properly detonated under the hull. I 
another Alba dead. We've destroyed an enemy cruiser. Our team has taken the lead. So positioning wise, I feel like this was a pretty successful game. I didn't really get chased away too much, but enough that I wasn't affected by the destroyers as badly as we played some other games this, today. I'm pretty happy with this one. This is also the risk of having all of your destroyers on one side in this game. You don't have the... Um, Congo's fast, so I need to lead a lot. My heal. I just need to be aware of what's behind me. Oh, that Congo's not going full speed. Yeah, we... Let him too much. What I didn't want to do from those destroyers is run to this edge of the map, right? Then I'm useless. What I wanted to do was make sure I could still shoot the middle of the map, but I needed to make sure that I was moving away from them steadily. So it's kind of like a tricky game. What would have really been difficult is if there was another destroyer blocking, um, threatening with torpedoes. But in this case, that wasn't there, so I kind of had free reign. Again, I'm just out of range of these torpedoes. I'm not too worried about them. Nice, got Confederate. Speaking of detonation, why is it that a lot of World War One ships detonated? Um, I mean, I think the same reason a lot of ships detonated, right? You have a lot of extremely explosive things packed aboard, especially when you're talking about magazines, um, for gun magazines, for you know battleships and et cetera. So I think, um, I mean, I think it's just a very, very high risk. <laughs> Fire and, and, you know, explosion were constantly a risk. I mean, they still are modern ships. Uh, I, I think you guys, I think a lot of people are aware that the U.S. lost a landing ship carrier recently, Bonham Richard, in San Diego to fire. And they're going to have to scrap the whole ship. It's, it's not repairable or rescuable. They were unable to, unable to put the fires out. I mean, you think about, like, that's a very, very modern ship with modern firefighting capabilities and everything. And Dunkirk's turning in. Downside of the Long Lances was a hit. Um... There's some evidence that it's a that they didn't actually explode as much as um, as much as we sort of like credit them with being like that. That was for a long time was a thought that 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 they did, but several of the Japanese wrecks have been found actually had their torpedoes still intact. Um, so it's possible they didn't actually explode at a much higher rate than other torpedoes did. The Japanese certainly treated them as a risk, though they would regularly dump them um, under air attack. Enemy cruiser destroyed. Ooh, we got a chance at a Kraken, guys. An Arizona Kraken on Pearl Harbor Day. Now that would be... I'm not going to be able to kill that Congo, but might be able to kill one of these other two battleships here. This Congo is just too angled, and, and it's going to be pointless for me to try to shoot. Let's try to get a Kraken. Some munitions can explode more than others, yes. Very much depends on... Well, a number of factors, but... Propellant being the biggest one. I think it was an electrical fire that started... You're talking about on Bonham Richard? Yeah, I think so as well. Alright, we have two caps. Hopefully this Dunkirk kills one of our ships to keep the game going. That would be great. So I can get a Kraken. Kill the Podvoisky? Oh, I think the Podvoisky is going to torpedo rush him and kill him. Ah. Or maybe not. There's a chance. There's a chance. Oh, boy. Not much of one. Is he burning, flooding? I can't hit him. He's dead. Ah. All right. Our last chance is to s somehow kill this West Virginia. He's moving this way. I don't think there's enough time left in the game for me to kill the West Virginia and get a crack in here. Can a ship still be operable if the whole primary and secondary tower is destroyed? I mean, yes. Uh... I mean, combat effective, almost certainly not. Um, but I mean, floating, as long as there's no hull damage, yeah, I mean, it can be floated, it can be towed, it can be done, whatever else. I mean, uh, 
South Dakota is a really good USS Battleship. South Dakota was a really good example of that. Um, South Dakota had massive electrical issues um, and uh, basically did nothing other than just get wrecked by the uh, Japanese fleet while Washington was destroying Kirishima. And uh, South Dakota was, I mean, from the like water line up, basically useless. But uh, this battleship was relatively easy to repair because there was no major hull damage. You just couldn't do anything with it. Like, the towers maintain, you know, this is where the sort of officers and fire control and, you know, command and control, navigation, all that kind of stuff would have been virtually impossible to, to do. Can we get a 27,000 damage salvo off this West Virginia? I think we, I got faith, guys. We can do it. We can do it. Nope. Nope. No Kraken. Just don't think there's enough. There's just not enough time. I mean, he's going to stay angled away from me. So he's going to live. They should ask West Virginia. They should add West Virginia with the 1944 um, refit. Yeah, it'd be cool. I got one more Sabo here. At the waterline. Uh, this needs to be like guided by the hand of Roosevelt himself here for us to. Uh, no. We'll take a very good Arizona game though. On Pearl Harbor Day, we'll take a very good Arizona game. We can't complain too much about that. Yeah, hopes for 27,000. It gets 1,000. It's sad. <laughs> it happens. I mean, this was a this was a, a very good Arizona game, though. I'm not going to complain. I, I uh, on, uh, on Pearl Harbor Day, as, as poorly as some of the other games in the stream have gone, I feel like that was pretty good.